Huh, so 10 years ago today, Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Cahool, released in the UK and Ireland. Guess I gotta celebrate. Let's talk about it. Legend of the Guardians was released 10 years ago. Wow does time fly. I remember watching it as a 6 year old and I didn't really think much. But when I was 14, hell yeah. That's when I absolutely adored the film. The film ended on a note to set up a second movie. With Clud surviving and about to collect Metal Beak's helmet. Sadly, the film underperformed, only making $140 million worldwide with an $80 million budget. I was positive and kept a lot of hope, but I've honestly decided to give up hope, as it's just at a point where it's been an entire decade, it's just not gonna happen. It could happen, but it unfortunately won't. But I want to talk about ideas for a reboot of the series. And no, not a film reboot, as I think it's a bad idea to just remake a movie years later when the original film ended on a setup note. But let's talk about my ideas of a Guardians of Gahul franchise. I was thinking about ideas, maybe they could do book series like the original books did, but also a graphic novel. But I thought about it, and I think a TV show would work better. I think one of the things that a Guardians of Gahul TV show would have to do with its story is obviously being having its own identity, so making the occasional change like what the movie adaptation did, but also being a lot more faithful to the books than the hour and a half film could be. I think one of the things that the movie did, which was an improvement over the original story, was Clud. Clud actually wasn't Metal Beak from the beginning. He actually killed off Metal Beak in the original books. In the film, actually, it was Clud that was just like a young, evil soldier. And I think that was a lot more interesting. And Catherine Lasky said herself that the film made some changes that she wished she'd thought of. So that's a pretty big achievement for a film based on a book series. I think the story would have to be the simple story. The original story would obviously be Soren is a young bear now. He dreams of being part of these legendary heroes known as the Guardians of Gahul. He's kidnapped one day, brought to St. Agelius, and he meets Gilfie. Then they escape, and then they find Twilight and Digger. They become good friends. Then they try to find the, gar the, the Guardians, and they find the Tree of Gahul. And then, you know, they try to be Guardians, and the Guardians obviously will have to fight the Pure Ones. But make it more, I don't know, flesh out. Like, make the story longer. Because the books, well, with the film, you're squeezing in three books into an hour and a half. And... As a book, as like a film, it's a crazy idea because you're mashing in three, and I mean three books that are long stories, and it's a bad idea because you're squeezing in so much plot. Now, I think Legend of the Guardians did it execute well. I really think that Legend of the Guardians is a pretty faithful film to the books. We're having a few changes and obviously being short. I think Legend of the Guardians as a film was faithful to the original books. Not 100% faithful, but I'd say 88% faithful. But, you know, obviously, you know, there are a few things that the movie did different to the books, like I said earlier with Claude. One thing that interests me about the film and the book was that in the film, it was Soren and Claude that were kidnapped. In the book, it was just Claude pushed Soren as a young hatchling and Soren was kidnapped. I want to see them actually do this in the original TV show. I think as a TV show, they'd have to go darker, much violent and... Possibly even not make it PG. Okay, you can have it PG, you can have it a similar tone to say Troll Hunters or Dragon's Race to the Edge or Avatar The Last Airbender. But I think having it more 12, as it would make it more, you could get away with more violent stuff, as the original book series was pretty damn violent. That's not to say the film had its violence, it did, but I think if we were to go a little more in that 12A rating, I think you could go to the extreme that the books did. I mean, the books have some pretty disturbing um, stuff, and it's quite violent. Like, some of it will actually, like, shock you. I won't say, but it's a pretty shocking tone that the books take. And they're actually classified as children books, so that's probably a bad idea. <laughs> But I think one thing the film did well was its violence. They handled it well. The dark tone, I think, is fantastic. It's the main reason why I love the film. But I think the story will have to be a little darker and they'll have to mix in the, the, the violence and go a little over, maybe not overboard, but a little more than what the film did. What would the story, like, you know, do? We could learn more about the characters. We can flesh out the world and more than what the film could do. And obviously with a TV show, since the episodes are 22 minutes, I think the film did enough of that world building and character development. But a TV show will do, can do more. 
it can flesh out more about Gahul. We can learn more about Taito Forest. We can learn more about the other Baron Elves that live there. Are they all like, you know, friends with each other? Do they all hate each other? Do they all, you know, have to stay in their own nests and all that? I think that would be interesting. What Soren's relationship would like with his family? Did he get along with Claude when Claude was younger? Did Claude look after Soren when Soren was a hatchling? What was Eglantine like? I mean, obviously we know in the film Eglantine's only a baby owl, but I mean, does Claude get along with Eglantine? Does Claude find Eglantine a pain? What are the parents like? What are the, the, they like as a family? What's Mrs. P like? Why is there a nursemaid for, you know, a family of titles? Why, you know, do they, why is it necessary for them to have a nursemaid? It's just all that questions that, you know, you can ask yourself and that a TV show I think can do. I think another thing it can do, you can add more myths and legends and like the guardians in the film, they're like considered like these legendary owls, like they're the heroes of the, you know, the, the earth. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm a little exaggerating saying they're the heroes of the earth, but they're heroes of, you know, Gahul, they're the heroes of the owl kingdoms and like we can learn like more flashbacks, like who was the first guardian? Was it Lies of Kiel? Was, you know, could have been Baron, you know, could have been even Soren's dad, Noctis. I think it would just be interesting and like how we could know, know a lot more about the guardians, but also the pure ones. We can give them a motivation. In the film, they believed they were the strongest of all owls, but we didn't really get a motivation as to why. Now, I'm not saying you don't have to have a motivation to be a good villain. I mean, example, a lot of people think Mezogog from Power Rangers Down Thunder is an excellent villain, but he doesn't really have much of a motivation, and I can't deny that. But I personally really like Mezogog. But I think what they could do is, what is the pure one's motivation? Maybe they like feel that like, you know, they're like a different race of owls, and they like feel that like, Barn Elves deserve more respect of their strategy and all that. It's a little hard for me to think of a motivation, but I think, you know, we can develop that. This show can add more development to our characters and the lore, the myths and the world. I also think another thing that this show needs to do and should do it correctly is having the show look photorealistic. The film is considered a visually stunning film. I mean, look at the characters. They look like real life owls. I think what the TV show needs to do, if it's gonna be computer animation, it has to be, you know, it has to capture the look. You have to make them look, you know, realistic. And while I understand that, you know, with a TV show, you have a certain budget, but for the budget that a show can be, try capture the realism, the locations, but most importantly, the characters. Guardians of Cahool is a pretty dark story, and I think adding, like, having the realism visuals, you know, it kind of adds to that darkness in, in a way. And I think that if you have those stunning visuals, like, have it more, like, realistic, look exactly like real life, I just think it would look fantastic. Now, it doesn't have to look as great as a movie. I understand that. I don't think any TV show has better animation than a film. Well, maybe the odd exceptions, but... I mean, for the most part, a TV show will have, you know, poor animation compared to its film. But I think the thing a show would need to do with its visuals is obviously have it look real life. You can even make it live action, just CGI the owls, but I mean, that would have to be a higher budget. I think another thing the TV show should do is one of the things I really appreciated about the film was how it actually went through a bit realistic with its fight scenes and what it's like to actually be a hero. Here's a clip. Oh. Well, this is what it looks like when you've actually fought in battle. It's not glorious, it's not beautiful, and it's not even heroic. It's merely doing what's right, and doing it again and again, even if someday you look like this. See, I really love that clip in the film because it shows that, you know, being a warrior isn't about, you know, oh, you know, the cool armor and doing the cool things. It's just about what's doing what's right. It's just a simple, I know it's simple, but it's true. It's realistic. And it's a thing that the film did really well. You should add more of that to the show. And like how it's like, oh, you know, you don't have to have, you know, the cool armor or how, you just have to do what's right. That's the whole point of being a hero. You can add some more things like maybe, you know, you can add the traditional UBU story where you don't have to be another person just to be, you know, cool. You just have to be yourself as that's what people want out of other people. I just think it would be great for the show to add more realistic, you know, notes like that, what the film did with Easel Rib, aka Liza Keel. The characters, I think, 
are the ones I'm really interested in talking about. I want to learn more about Soren. I think Soren, we can obviously, like I said earlier, what's his relationship like with his family? I think one thing we can do with Soren is like, what was he like as a child? Like, what was he like as a child? How did his dad, you know, how did he learn about the Guardians of Cahoot? Okay, it was obviously true his dad telling him, but like, was he interested the first time in learning about them? Was he actually scared of the stories like we saw Eglantine was in the trailer? But is Soren like, what was he like as a kid? Did he care about the Guardians of Cahoot? Did he want to have fun? Now, you don't have to do a lot with him being a kid, but I think, you know, you can do a lot more with him being an adult. Like, I want to know you know, more about him, like, what's his goal? He obviously wants to be a guardian, but, like, what does he want out of being a guardian? Like, does he want to be a hero? Does he want to be cool? And obviously, you know, it's not about being cool, it's just about doing what's right. But I think one thing that they should do with Soren is flesh him out more. Give him a character arc, and maybe it's his journey of coming this, you know, young owl that's raised on myths and legends and then goes to be like this young warrior then goes to be like this big leader like Liza Keel is and then becomes the king of Cahool like he was in the end of the books. Spoiler alert! Whoops! So yeah, I think Soren has a lot of potential. He's a lot of potential to become a more fleshed out character in a show. Gilfi is the same here. What about the desert of Kinnear? I would like to know more about that. What was the place like? Was it a place for elf owls and what was she like, you know, I mean, how did she get kidnapped by Grimble um, in the film? But, like, I want to know more about, like, what was Gr Gilfi like? What does she want, like, the, it, does she like Sora? Does she want to be a guardian? Or I just think it's cool. Same with Twilight and Digger. You can have them as the traditional comic reliefs, but in the original book series, Digger was a completely different character. You can do the comic relief, but I think making him more serious could actually work. I think it would be interesting to see a character that was much more silly in the film, but actually go from that silly comedic in the original, then in the remake just being completely serious like he was in the books. You can add a little bit of humour to him, but I think it would be cool to see Digger more serious. I don't think it would work, but I mean, it would be cool. Twilight can play more songs. We can learn more about like how he got his loot. Like, why does he like singing? Why does he like making battle songs? I just think it's cool. Same with Lies of Keel, aka Easelrid. We can know much more about him, his legends, his story, and how he became a guardian, how he found Gahul. Like, was he born in Gahul? Or, you know, like, I want to know, we want to know more about him. Like, how is he this great legendary hero? What did he do? Did he do an achievement to become a Lies of Kiel? Did he, you know, just train to become like this powerful guardian that's like the leader of all the guardians? I just think that would be, you know, interesting to learn more about his heritage and his legacy as he's considered by Sauron like this big hero. He's considered by, you know, Gahul to be this big hero as he's the leader of the guardians. He's, you know, the, the art, he's, he, he leads the army and that's that's cool. And with Claude, well, I think it would be interesting if we see Claude, what was he like as a child and how did he grow up to be more aggressive? Obviously he was fed up of hearing about the Guardians of Cahool, but I think it would be cool if we get to see more of his relationship with Sorin and why does he find him so annoying and like, does he just find him annoying because he's younger than him? Because we all know, like, that's what it's like to be in, you know, in real life with siblings can annoy each other. But I would like to know, like, we can do a lot with Claude. Why does he want to be evil? It's because he, you know, he wants power. But we can learn more about, about Claude. And, you know, we can learn more, like, what, why does he want to be, like, this leader of this evil gang? Does he want to kill Sorn? Is he secretly good? Does he just want... Does he have a lot going on in his head or is it just not going is he just not going through the right time? And we can do more character development with Claude. You can like do more like say he is the leader of the pure ones, but he also at the same time he wants to be good. He just doesn't have the heart or the capacity to be a good owl. He wants to be evil. You can do the same with Naira. You can do a lot more with her as a queen, you know. We can actually do this more interesting, I think, you know. Maybe Metal Beat, the Sutar that we know in the movie, he's not in the film. Maybe we could, he's like a past warrior killed by the Guardians. And 
Naira is like, you know, the only leader of the pure ones. And then, you know, Naira meets Clod and then Clod, you know, maybe they like have a bit of a battle and obviously, you know, they, they like each other. And then Clod obviously, you know, becomes the leader of the pure ones. I just think there's a lot you can do and there's a lot you can do with Clod and Naira as leader of the pure ones. And the pure ones, like, like I said, why are they evil? What do they want? I just think there's a lot of potential. So, yeah, do I think this TV show could happen? I honestly kind of doubt it. I just think it's been 12 goddamn years since the book series ended. And there hasn't been anything for Gahul since 2013. Since that spin-off book, I think, released that year. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm sure something came out for it in 2013 with the book series. But I genuinely have better hope that a TV show can happen than A Legend of the Guardians 2. But there is one thing I think that they should do. I think what they should do is, if they're going to make a TV show, you'll have to remake it. It's just, what's the point of continue doing a continuation of a film? I mean, sure, it's on Netflix still in a few countries, but it's actually been removed off Netflix in the UK and Ireland since the end of May 2020. And I just don't see the point. Like, why would you want, oh, okay, let's make a TV show. Let's continue where the film left off. But the film came out a decade ago. It's just going to be like, oh yeah, I remember Legend of the Guardians. Let's see what the TV show's like. See if it's a remake or a continuation. See, less people are going to think it's a continuation because of how old the movie is. So I think going for a remake is a better route. I don't want a film remake, but I would like a TV show remake to be more flesh out and, you know, give us more development on the world, the story and the characters. So yeah, those are my ideas for a Guardians of Cahoot TV show. I'll have more in the future, but... That's all I gotta say. And happy 10th anniversary, Legend of the Guardians, The Elder Cool. I can't believe it's 10 years old. It's, wow, it came out a long time ago. It's the same age as How to Train Your Dragon. Huh. So yeah, that's my idea. Stay tuned for my next video. And until then, guys, skadoosh everyone and take care.